Okay. Hello. Hello. Hi. Hello. 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 Yeah. Like to see you and all of that. Yeah. How how you doing today? I'm good. I'm good. I'm I'm chill. Like I wake up a bit late, so I have like my fresh morning. Um, or or over. How about you? How are you doing? I'm I'm pretty good. Yeah, just getting ready here. I hope this isn't too echoey, but you can hear me all good, right? We're all clear. Nice. Sorry. Cool. Good. Great. Awesome. So, um, Teresa, could you introduce yourself? Maybe just give an idea of who you are for the people watching. Um, so, hello, everyone. Um, I'm a poet, writer, um, and um, currently Young People's Laureate for London. So, um, I do a lot of work with um, poetry organising um, events, running workshop, doing poetry projects, um, yeah, just finding new ways to engage with, um, to engage people with poetry. Yeah. So the first question I've got for you, it's a bit philosophical, but we'll see how we do with it. Uh, it's why okay. poetry and spoken word, like what about poetry and spoken word speaks to you specifically? Um, so I actually started off um, wanting to write other forms. So I started off wanting to write short story wanting to write a film, like wanting to write everything else. Um, and um, I found poetry, like of course, like we learned poetry in class um, and then we went on a school trip to um, a poetry festival and I heard a poem there and I was just completely blown away with just how much you can do in a poem. It's just this small vessel and you can communicate so much in that form. And I, and I love just how much you can play with language, play with sound, um, play with form and there was just so many possibilities and impossibilities that I could explore in a in a poem and express myself in a way that I hadn't been able to do in any other form yeah. um, and so that was why I, I ended up choosing poetry. Okay that's great and I know you've done some work um, mixing poetry with other forms as well so what is yeah. that like? Um, I really enjoy like mixing poetry with other forms. I don't think I've explored um, as much as I want to, but I think one, one thing I have done is film. I've done a few poetry films. Um, and what I love about film and with any form is that, it, that whatever form you're combining poetry with isn't just mimicking the poem, it's adding another layer to it. Um, and I love that with film, you can um, kind of navigate the, the audience. You can fix them on a particular image that you want to expand more on. So for example, if you're in a poem about home or something, um, something happening in a home with film, you can maybe fix it on that scene and, con and have the poem continue and layer over that. And so the way the audience takes in that poem is different than if they're reading it. So for example, the um, film that I did for Channel 4's Random Acts, um, that film was, was about mental health and it was about someone who was, um, who was trying to escape from water. Water was a metaphor for, for anxiety. Um, and in the film, what we had was we had the sound of the tap running um, through the poem and we also had the lead character hold an umbrella which physically represented trying to overcome this water. And that's something that um, might not necessarily be possible in the, in the poem in terms of like, fi like fixing that visual um, that visual image in the audience's mind. So yeah, there, there's a lot that you can really play with um, in film, just kind of navigating um, the images that you want, or the images of the sound that you want the um, that you want the audience to take in. Yeah. So you said you'd um, like there were other mediums you wanted to explore. Which ones are those? Um, music. I've always really wanted to because I love writing about um, music. I, I tend to write about music a lot. Um, but I've just not found the way in. So I've been able to find it with film and I've been able to find what I want to play with, but I just don't want to use sound. I want to know why I'm using sound. What, what, what do I want to, to do? What do I want to insert my own cultural sound into it? So I haven't been able to find that way yet. So that's the reason why I haven't done so much um, mm -hmm. sound. Yeah. Okay, so um, obviously you are the Young People's Laureate for London, in case you haven't mentioned it. <laughs> what is, uh, can you tell us about like what's led you to this point in your career as a poet um i think you never pre prepare i wasn't like doing everything i was doing thinking oh i'm going to become <laughs> sorry for london um it felt like a very far stretched role 
But I think in general, what I was doing was I was taking up as many experiences as I could that would help me become the, the, what, I, what, what was possible in my career. So, then, so I wasn't thinking, oh, this is for the laureate role. I was just like, this is going to be good for building a career. So I started performing as, as much as possible, gaining that confidence in performance because I, I wasn't that confident quite enough. I also, so I also knew that I wanted to gain some teaching experience. So I studied some um, poets that I really liked um, who, who, were already, who already had built a career. So I studied them in their workshop. So I, I learned how to teach and I started teaching. Um, I um, became a producer for Poetry Night and I gained experience in that way. So I was just doing, it wasn't at all, I'm, I'm going to run events in the future, but I was just gaining as much experience in different parts because that's the way I would know what I, I wanted to do. So when it came to the laureate role and I was interviewed, I'd kind of gained enough experience to um, take up kind of anything new that comes up um and just yeah just experienced it to lead the, the um the program so that that was how that happened it was just kind of a series of things that i'd, I'd done that i guess helped yeah yeah so you definitely say like try as much as possible do as much as you can get involved yeah. as much as you can yeah definitely um try something new as well um there's there's so many different ways to engage with, with poetry it's not just performing it can be maybe as helping out edit an anthology or like helping someone give feedback on their work these are all little skills that are really beneficial you know maybe even being a, like editor of a poetry magazine for example um so just gaining even the, the things that's small like gaining all those experiences Yeah, that's great. So, um, under the lockdown, you've been running hashtag Say Your Piece. What's that kind of been like? Um, it's been great. Um, thankfully, I, I tried um, last year, end of August last year, we had tried doing a digital poetry campaign that would be like especially realizing that a lot of young people a lot of people in general use social media and are using social media to share poetry and so it felt like the great platform to get people to share poetry um and the campaign was started because in the midst of everything going in especially when the lockdown started there was so anxiety driven news um and so i felt like you know this and people in general were struggling to write including me and this was a great way um, to get people not only to write, but to write about things that were bringing us peace in this time, because there are things that are keeping us sane. Um, and so the, the, the campaign has been great. We had um, a range of submissions, not just from London, but from outside the country as well, which is, which is great and shows the power of social media. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. So do you think, like, poetry is very important in these sort of times? There's lots of anxieties and lots of worries. Yeah, poetry is. I mean, poetry has this um, very powerful way of allowing us to, ex to express our emotions that I'm not going to say any other art form doesn't, but poetry, <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm not like, you know, like, um, yeah, pushing that. But poetry really is, it, it's almost like an explosion of emotion yeah. and it gives us the language to explore that. Um, in, in a poem, we're able to express ourselves, I feel like, in a way that everyday language doesn't allow us to. You're able to play with language and rearrange them in a, in a way that, um, yeah, that allows us to express how we're feeling. Um, and, yeah, I, I think poetry just gives us that language to express ourselves um, and just to be creative in that way as well, um, creative while expressing ourselves. So, yeah, I, 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 yeah, I genuinely think that people should, <laughs> should take that up. Um, and try and write something even if it's not a poem try and write out your feelings mm -hmm. how have you kind of so obviously you're talking about how people have like struggled to write and I get that as well like what I'm trying to write right now it's yeah crazy. but like how have you managed to push yourself to write and create in this sort of time um, I think by I mean there is no one way but you have to try different ways one of the things that I've tried is um, finding new inspirations, finding new ways to gain inspiration. So like before I used to write a lot on my bed, I still write on my bed, but like sometimes I would write on the train 
um, I was used to like that kind of fast paced life. So I would gain it. I would gain that inspiration by maybe what the action or um, just like my um, conversation with friends and things like that. See that dynamic has changed. So now I'm trying to find a little inspiration. So like the, the last poem I wrote was about a paper down my feet to music um, at a random time. I'm trying to find like the most random inspiration if it's just writing about the socks that you're wearing while you're at home um just yeah try try to to write even the things that seem very mundane in this time sometimes that's even where the, the more beautiful and impactful poems come from mm -hmm. just kind of just like take what you have and do what you can with it in a way honestly take what you can and, and do what you can it's not and you don't have to write about like the law i feel like a Sometimes why we struggle to write in this time is because we're trying to write about everything. We like want to write that lockdown poem. <laughs> um, and I don't think there is a lockdown poem because we're all experiencing life in different ways. It's not like a, I want to write a poem about everything that's going on in the world. What you can try to do is just write about how you're experiencing the world right now. Just mm -hmm. just focusing on those things and the bigger poem can come later. And it doesn't even, it, do, it might not even come because sometimes the bigger poem is just how you're existing in this time. Mm -hmm. um, so just try take what you can and let that be the point that you fight through in that moment. Mm -hmm. So this question is a bit whip, there's kind of whiplash between this last question and this one, but yeah, so bear with okay. you. Um, yeah. So there's been like a lot of discussions in light of like recent events about um, race in the arts and like yeah. um, in, or in all sectors, but particularly in the arts. So do you think there is enough space being made for black poets? And if not, what kind of needs to change? Um, it's interesting because I feel like every generation has to have this conversation. So like the, the poets that came before us, like when they tell us their stories, I'm like, oh, okay. <laughs> and they're like, oh, um, you know, an article comes out years about poetry, rock, music or something yeah. like that. Um, and when I, when I started off and I wanted to get published, I remember reading last about the amount of um, BAME poets um, that were being published, and Black poets in particular. And it was a very low number, like 1%. And I remember thinking, oh my goodness, this is atrocious. This is depressing. Um, how can I even make it in this, in this um, sector? And now, years on, a lot still needs to change, but things have changed. So there was a program that happened called the Complete Works Program uh, that was started. Bernadine Baristo and um, was on the direction of um, Professor Natalie Tetler. And that was a program to support the publication of um, um, BAME poets. And after that, there was a significant rise in the number of um, black poets that were published. But it's still, there's still a lot that needs to be done. So Roger Robinson won the T.S. Eliot Prize and he was the first black poet. And in 2020, that, that is not something to be celebrating, that's something to be questioning. But at least that happened. So um, what I think needs to happen next is that I think a lot of um, publishers, especially ones that hold power, should, should give black poets risk, allow black poets risk, allow us to write about whatever we want to write about. Um, there doesn't have to be this pressure of, this, uh, of one black poet trying to write the world in one collection. Let us write about the different things that we want to write about. Let us publish us. And hold them accountable. If they're receiving funding, check, like, you get what I mean? Like, let it be, let it be, let it be the norm that they have to, um, they have to represent the world that we live in with the people that they, um, that with the people that they publish. Um, and this is me speaking in public specifically because that's where you see a lot of the, the problems um, in as well. But I think in general, and this is not just for published, um, Black poets should you have access the, the same opportunities and I think risk in general this is something that applies not just to published performance being able to access certain spaces um, so I think yeah um, organisations should be held accountable and black poets should be allowed to take risks it shouldn't yeah. be one poet that leads the generation it should be, we should be allowed to write about everything um, yeah. yeah I always find it like really interesting with like poetry specifically because of how many maybe not published, but how many black poets I know there are and like have existed. Like there's, obviously you can't not mention like Audre Lorde or uh, James mm -hmm. Gordon or anyone. There's like so many 
Yeah. It's so weird that there's like this disconnect between the reality and what's being published and like rewarded. Yeah, I think even like the poets that you mentioned, I think it's very easy for us to um, just think about the um, American world and poetry and ignore and, and forget the huge issue with the representation of that poets in the UK. Um, and I feel like that's what Britain has been able to do for a very long time. Yeah. It's just, oh, we, we have black poets. <laughs> Names of the black poets. It's like, okay, no, no, no. Tell me the, the black <laughs> British poets that you have published. Do you know what I mean? And the yeah. same thing comes with prizes. And it shouldn't even be that way because then what that creates is a tension between black poets in different parts of the world or black creatives in general because then it becomes about you've taken the opportunities that I could have taken. And, and, and then it just creates this you know, this tension between black creatives in general, because everyone's trying to get that one opportunity and it shouldn't even be that way. So, yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh, so what advice do you say, would you say you have for up and coming poets? My advice for up and coming poets, I think the first one will always be read poetry, take in poetry, read poetry, watch poetry. Um, I mean, if, if you want to, before you even break rules, you have to know the rules. <laughs> you have to know what you're doing in the first place. You cannot be a, a singer and not study other singers. Um, or any of, or fashion designer and look at other fashion designers. So really take in poetry. But also when you do, try to differentiate your voice. Try to discover your own voice. Um, don't try to sound like the poets that you're watching. Don't try to sound like jam poetry or button poetry really just embrace finding out your own style, voice what what do you want to write about what you want to say. and the other advice is um don't be too disheartened about rejection because this industry i mean it's not just even with poetry just the arts in general i mean life in general but also especially the the arts um i i can't i there's a there's a lot of things i i there's a lot of times I face rejection and it never stops. Even, you know, the people that you think are, as a, are established in their career, they still face the same um, thing. So I think having that confidence in your work and believing in yourself is what is going to keep you going. And that sometimes if you don't get anything, it, it, it's, it, might, it might not be personal. It might just be that wasn't the time or um, that just wasn't the, the thing for you in this time and maybe you get it next. So just just be preparing yourself. You know, this is something that you're called to do and you love to do, and that love will keep you going. So yeah. yeah. And so lastly, for this, um, two things. Uh, it's kind of in one. But um, <laughs> where can people uh, find you online, and what can we expect coming next from you? Oh gosh, that coming next question. <laughs> <laughs> um, in terms of where people can find me online. Um, I guess on on social media. I mean, I have a website, um, teresalola um dot com. Teresa over hey, because I know people have their different ways of spelling it. Um, and on social media, it's the same on Twitter and um, um Instagram. Um, it's Teresa underscore Lola, and on Facebook, just Teresa Lola. Apart from that, probably even in the shops. <laughs> I don't know, but that's mainly it. Um, but in terms of what's coming up next, <laughs> I dread this question. <laughs> um, but um, in general, right right now, I, I am writing uh, and I'm just enjoying writing. I cannot specifically say what's coming next because I'm still trying to decide because I'm you know, like exploring different things and writing different things. So I don't know which one of them will be next. But I'm just having fun um, writing new things because um, especially when you write a collection you write about one specific thing throughout and so i'm just exploring enjoying writing about something else <laughs> so right now that's i guess that's what is, um what is next and i'll probably exp um, play more with film and music um a bit more um in line with what i'm working on yeah mm -hmm. great thank you so much for joining me so thank what we have next from Teresa is there is a Zoom which um, Nikki has linked. That's the pinned comment there. Um, there is a Zoom workshop which is going to be happening in the next, like, 10 minutes-ish for about half an you hour. Want to it, by the way, or should I do that in the workshop or I can skip it? Uh, but I just mentioned that. Want... Yeah, but go ahead. Sorry. 
<laughs> if we don't have time, I can skip it, but I just want to be sure that I didn't uh, miss it. We have a few minutes, so I think you can... Okay. Yes, <laughs> go ahead. <laughs> That's fine. Um, okay, then. Um, thank you. Um, the I'll just read the poem I mentioned, the one I said about writing about my, my neighbour down the road. Um, so I, I have a neighbour who at very random times just plays music. Um, and so I decided to <laughs> write about it. Um, so this is to my neighbour who plays music at random times during the week. Very clever title, but yeah. <laughs> my neighbour plays music at random hours during the week. Some days they play soul music, the kind that rests in the air and places a blanket over your wounds. Some days it's pop, oldies pop, coated in leather trousers, or new and recycled radio hits that make me feel like I'm on a long queue at a retail shop in Oxford Circus. Some days it's Bob Marley swaying out of their speakers, occasionally it's Afrobeat. There are days the song they play feels too coincidental to be ordinary. Days when the song they play flies into my opened window like a bird with a letter rolled inside its beak. A song that reminds me there are so many ways to define living and there will always be a definition that makes me feel beautiful. I am tempted to talk to my neighbours about their playlists, ask how each song found them and trailed them home like a roaming animal searching for an owner. I want to know what leads them to play the music and how they decide which song to play. Because music never just appears out of nowhere. Something from within prompts a hand over the play button. A feeling like joy and nostalgia or sadness or a mix of things swirling inside you and thickening with each tease of fire. When I'm eager to throw the questions over the offence, I remember that I'm an awkward introvert. There are vague ideas that you can tell a lot about a person from the music they listen to. So when I'm bored from writing poems, I play the game of trying to discover my neighbours through the music they listen to. Wonder if there's stories of how they discovered track one that played on Thursday during that hot day in June that year is the same as how I discovered that track one too. Each song plays and I listen with eyes closed and intent. And I think maybe we should all communicate through music. Let words dance with the life that they truly deserve. Yeah. I didn't hear that through, but that is... <laughs> um, so yeah, if you want to hear more great and want to figure out how to make your own, then follow through to the Zoom call, which is pinned below. And but yeah, thank you everyone for joining us. Thank you so much, Theresa. Thank you. And yeah, we will see you all, or as many of you as can make it at the Zoom call. Thank you. All right then. Bye. Bye.